Jim Dolson and Ben Jones from U.S. Staffing are here. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Tim. How good are you? Good morning, Tim. Well, I'm doing good. It's a big weekend in Detroit. The uh, Tigers have the Cardinals in town. Yeah. It's kind of a 50th anniversary of that 68 World Series. Oh. If only. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if only. Well, it I was a, re a real remembrance of it right now. I got to see one of them. They yeah. didn't win, but I did get to see one of those series. Oh, nice. oh did you? 68, yeah. And I got yeah. to see Danny McLean win his 30th there. Oh, very yeah. cool. So that was wow. kind of cool. But, uh, Got a lot of college football coming up. Yeah, we do. Michigan State going for their second straight win. And, yeah. Uh, so is Northwestern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ben's and, a Northwestern uh, fan. Michigan Old Range. <laughs> no, don't go there. Uh, to but, my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, OSU playing Rutgers. Oh, uh, without Urban Meyer, of course. I, yes, without Urban on the sideline. And, now, some uh, people think he was a good hire, and other people are saying, eh, he maybe wasn't a good hire. Well, up here in Michigan. His assistant coach, though, <laughs> definitely not a good hire. But, yeah. I mean, that sort of stuff happens, right? Right. That's yeah. right. Tim, speaking, speaking of bad hires. Yeah. Tim, this morning we are talking about bad hires. You know those people we hired, but... Then wish we had not. <laughs> yeah, we've all got them in our best. That's right. Well, we're going to get to that article in a moment, but first we dug up some interesting factoids on employers, employees, and their hiring habits. Yeah, now this this may or may not surprise people, but the average time spent by recruiters, people who make the decisions as well about hiring people, the average time looking at resumes is only like five to seven seconds per resume. Like it takes us hours to write those things, That's still and amazing. people spend five to seven seconds. Like I. I once sifted through an entire stack of resumes during the fourth quarter of a Lions game, which they ended up losing. And I was sitting <laughs> yeah, on my couch sure. doing it, and I bet I spent maybe 10 seconds on each resume. Just yes, no, yes, no, yes, uh, no. Right. Yeah. Well, here's an interesting statistic about employees. 30% of them search for new jobs while at their current <laughs> job. <laughs> so if you're that employee right now listening to the radio, hearing my voice, you should go to USStaffingAgency.com. We will not tell anybody. <laughs> we'll keep it on the down low. Here's another stat that's also kind of disturbing. 53% uh, of resumes and job applications contain falsifications. 70% uh, of college students indicated that they would lie on a resume to get the job they wanted. And we talked. We heard you talk about funny fake news. So yeah. uh, resumes definitely can fall into that category. We encourage people: don't lie on your resume. Yeah. Never good. It'll come back to bite. That's yep. right. You can find time. out. And finally, the average bad hire that leaves a company within the first six months costs that company approximately about forty thousand dollars in various costs. And that leads us into our topic this morning. Yeah. So we found this uh, recent an article recently published in the Harvard Business Review about. What to do when you make a bad hire. If you're the manager, what do you do when you find that person's a bad hire? Sometimes it happens that a candidate who had the right credentials, had a great reference checkout, turns out to be an unexpected problem after you hire them. Yeah, if you've been in this situation, you've had to face the dilemma of whether it's worse to be stuck with an employee who can't handle the workload and is possibly doing damage to the company, or admit that you've made a bad hire. Yeah. So what do you do at that point, Jim? Yeah, so first of all, prepare for a direct and probably very uncomfortable conversation with that new person. You know, leveling with that new hire about your dissatisfaction and their lack of performance can really open the way to problem solving, though. Yeah, you know, and keep in mind that the, this new employee, if they have any self-awareness, probably recognizes some of the same problems as well. Mm -hmm. And they'll probably be grateful for the opportunity to clear the air and work on a solution together. Yeah, for sure. The second action you should take when you realize you've made a bad hire is try and repair the situation by reassigning an employee, that employee to a different area. Now, we're not talking about moving a problem from one area to the other, yeah, but point. if this employee is a solid contributor, then maybe the employee can be moved and be a contributor in a, in a better way in, in another department. Yeah. You know, and a third action you can take uh, when you've made a bad hire is to think about the current and the future cost of keeping a bad hire in the company. We mentioned forty some thousand dollars if it's a bad hire. Uh, in some situations, though, the negative impact on coworkers by this bad hire costs the company a whole lot more than it would be if you just like let them go. So think about that as well. Yep. Finally, when you've made a bad hire, Try to make the exit out of the company smooth with the least amount of disruption as possible. And this isn't always easy. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it doesn't usually go well. <laughs> but you need to start by negotiating together for a mutually beneficial plan with this employee. 
an honest conversation can give the employee and you the opportunity to make the transition cordially and hopefully you'll part ways as mature professionals. Yeah, we always encourage people, don't don't blow up those bridges if you don't need to. Right. You know, definitely pull on your HR department uh, if you can, if you've got an HR department to help you through this process. Now listen, if you're an employer and you've made a bad hire that you want to replace, contact us. We have a huge list of great employees who want a new place to work. And if you're a solid employee and you need a new address to work at, call us. We're matchmakers. That's what we talk about all the time on this show. Looking to connect great employers to solid employees. Ben, tell the folks how to contact us. Well, Tim, if employers and potential associates want to talk with us, they can find us on Facebook at U.S. Staffing Agency. They can live chat with us on our website at usstaffingagency.com. Or they can come into our Battle Creek location at West at 914 West Columbia Avenue. Our phone number there is 269-589-6507. Let us help you find a new career or that new employee today. Jim, Ben, U.S. Staffing, we appreciate you being here. We'll talk to you again next week, okay? Sounds good. good. Thanks, Thank Tim.